Good morning, friends. It has been a minute. I feel like every video I start, I'm like, it has been a minute. <laughs> so uh, yeah, lots has been going on on my end. So I have not had a whole lot of time to read and little desire to turn on the camera, but here I am. I do wanna get back into the swing of things. Things are settling down and I'm feeling just really lovely. And my cat's whining as per usual in the background. But I thought we could go to the library together because I went about a month ago and I was completely blown away by the quality and just the overall selection was truly impeccable. And mind you, like I live in a pretty like rural, isolated place in the interior of the province that I live in. And I just would have never expected to have the kind of funding and interest in housing and buying these just really wonderful books. So at the time I was reading Lent, I believe. So it was kind of a chunkier book. And I thought to myself, you know what? Like I'm not going to get anything now, but I'm just going to footnote this and come back. And here we are. There's also a super cute cafe within the library, which I don't know why that's not a thing, at least as far as I know in Vancouver. And it's such a genius idea. Like you go pick yourself a little book, then you go into the cafe, order a nice warm beverage, and you know, you dive on in. Like that just sounds delightful. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do on this very sunny Sunday morning. I'm gonna have some breakfast and then head, head on downtown. And the building itself is just really lovely. So anyways, I'll, I'll show you when we get there. But um, as for what I've been reading, I, like I said, just literally have not done much, but I did finish the Book of X which I hate to say this, but it was such a disappointment. I think I just like truly hyped it up so much in my head and it just did not, did not live up to it. It was almost like it, it had the potential and I just like kept on pushing through because it was like on the cusp of being really great or getting really deep or, you know, going somewhere really beautiful or saying something really like just delicious but it just like never fully crystallized. It never fully got there, or at least to the point where I wanted to, or the point that I wanted it to get to. There are some lovely sentences and I feel like there was so much to work with in the story and the world and the character, but it just like didn't quite do it for me. We follow, I think her name is Cassie. We follow a young girl from the time that she is in high school to the time when she's in her adulthood years navigating uh, a very like insular life um for most of the book she has a knot in her abdomen area that obviously is a, a point of distinction between her and everyone else and a point of um like resentment for her mom because the her maternal uh, side of the family is the one that um has this abnormality I suppose and yeah she gets it removed and then she's navigating the world of intimacy and finding love and connection and um a, her, a place in the world and finding that fulfillment in solitude and in men that she meets at um nearby bars she uh switches homes anyways it's 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 a good story and like again there's a lot to work with like I said but it just it just didn't do it for me like I wish I I could say otherwise but and perhaps this will change the more maybe I think about it um and we'll see if it does have a a lasting kind of uh touch but as of now I can't say that it was a favorite like I really wanted it to be. But yeah, so let's just see what we can find at the bookstore today and yeah, we'll see you soon.
yummy. Afternoon tea after class, delish. Anyways, um, it is actually Tuesday now. It's been a few days. I totally forgot to film yesterday and here we are. I had the loveliest Sunday. It was honestly just like perfect timing because this might be the most successful library outing I've ever had. Like it was truly just something else. I, I just kept on encountering banger after banger. Um, that includes books that I hadn't read or books that I have read that are quite niche. And I was so surprised that they had, like they had Cold Enough for Snow. They had all of the Yuri Herrera books. They had Open Water, which is like not that rare because I know a lot of people like that book. But yeah, it was just like wild. It was incredible in there. The only thing which actually didn't end up being an issue, but I guess the coffee shop inside the library closes on Sundays. So that was uh, a no-go, but it was still just really lovely. I just sat and read my book in the quiet area of the library that has like a really pretty view of the mountains. And then my sweet friend met up with me downtown and we ended up walking along the river and it was just like so nice. It was a beautiful day as well, sun-wise. So that was just really great. Anyways, let's do a little bit of Holland, shall we? You're gonna be shook. You're gonna, you're also gonna be like, damn, this library really just is so well stocked. The first book being um, Enticing Joy by the one and only Ross Gay. My jaw dropped when I saw this. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, this just came out. I feel like this came out November, I wanna say, 22, but it doesn't say when. I kid you not, this came out like a mere months, a mere two months ago, if that. So yeah, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> And I literally started it that very night and I'm a hundred pages in. Obviously it's amazing. Like we already knew that. <laughs> I'll talk about this more later, but of course it's a friggin' just warm hug, a delicious cup of coffee, medicine. I mean, it's, it's Ross Gay. So yeah, could not believe my luck when I saw that, truly. Uh, then I actually got a couple, I got more nonfiction actually than fiction, which is which is new for me. I guess I'm gonna try and read more nonfiction this year, question mark. <laughs> I mentioned this already, but I'm not doing any goals this year. I just wanna continue to be intentional with my reading. And the reason why I'm just not even setting up a goal is because it's just kind of hard for me to gauge how much reading I get done during school and how much reading I'll get done in the summer, depending on what kind of job I get, if it's legal-ish or if it's not going to be legal-ish. So I don't know, just a lot up in the air. But anyways, this book I got is Rehearsals for Living. I think these two authors are in correspondence during the pandemic and they decide to publish their letters in this book. Um, and it's a conversation between Robin Maynard and Leanne Berasamasake Simpson, which is the author of Nupaming, one of my favorite books. And this just sounded so interesting. I We actually received and did an event for this book at the bookstore, but I just never got around to reading it. So when I saw it at the library, I was like, gotta cop it. Okay, um, when the world entered pandemic lockdown in spring 2020, Robin Maynard, influential author of Policing Black Lives and Leanne Barasamasake Simpson, renowned artist, musician, and author of Nupaming, began writing each other letters. A gesture sparked by a desire for kinship and connection in a world shattered under the inter intersecting crises of pandemics, police killings, and clim climate catastrophe. These letters soon grew into a powerful exchange about where to go from here. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading this. I think it's going to be just super informative, really considerate, full of compassion. And it's just nice to be inside the minds of these really inspiring people doing good things. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Then this is another one that I've spoken about uh, on several occasions, but I myself, sorry if the angle just moved a little bit, my camera, tripod thing almost fell. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've talked about this book on several occasions and I just haven't gotten around to reading it. And that is The Right to Sex, Feminism in the 21st Century by Amiya Srini, Srinivasan. I just butchered that last name. I apologize. But there's been a lot of buzz. You all know what this is about, apart from the obvious. <laughs> And yeah, I cannot wait to read this either. I'm just gonna just fill my brain up with so much wisdom, knowledge, and I can't wait. <laughs> uh, the next one I got is Mr. Split Tooth by Samantha Hunt. 
I have no idea what this is about, honestly. Um, they had The Seas by Samantha Hunt and they also had this. So I figured, you know what? That is one of my favorite books maybe ever. So I should probably continue to read what the author has out there. And this is one of them. I think this is like a gothic tale, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Ruth and Nat are 17. They are orphans and they are developing an uncanny ability to talk to the dead. Ooh, yeah. I think it's going to be like horror gothic vibes. These talents bring them into the orbit of Mr. Bell, a con man with his own mystical interests. Together, they embark on an unexpected journey that connects meteor sites, utopian communities, lost mothers, and scar that maps its way across Ruth's face. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Decades later, and after years of absence, Ruth visits her niece, Cora. But while Ruth used to speak to the dead, she now won't speak at all. It seems, though, that she has arrived just in time. Cora is in trouble, single and pregnant and not sure what's in store for her. Cora knows Aunt Ruth has a plan, and even if she's not, even if she's not telling, their journey will become an odyssey. But where is Ruth taking them? Where has she been all these years? Why won't she talk? And who or what is hidden in the woods at the end of the road? Ooh, all right. Okay, so this is like out of my comfort zone, not typically what I read, but uh, like I said, if it's written by Samantha Hunt, it can't be horrible. Or maybe it will be horrible, but I'm going to be hopeful because I just have her in such a highly esteemed spot in my brain. <laughs> so I just, I'm hoping and projecting good things onto this book. So we'll see. And then the last one is Checkout 19 by Claire Louise Bennett. This is the first one I grabbed because the cover was very familiar because if I'm not mistaken, this may have been Pato's favorite of the year, if not in the top, I don't know if they ranked their books, but anyways, that's where I saw this. I couldn't tell you what it's about. I just completely erased actual information <laughs> from their words in regards to this book, but I did remember the cover. So yeah, and I'm not even gonna read you the blurb. I don't wanna know anything about this, but I've heard other people uh, speak about this book as well, but their video I think was my introduction to this to this book. Anyway, yeah, I have no idea. The cover is really stimulating and it's calling my name. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, <gasps> Oh my gosh, it's this video, uh, it's this book. So yeah, that's the nice thing about the library. All these books are free. <laughs> so like just really low stakes. If I hate them, I can just return them and it's fine. Like it's at no cost to me whatsoever. So yeah, um, I've been reading Enticing Joy, really, really enjoying myself with it. It's doing wonders for my mental health already. <laughs> The power, the healing powers of Ross Gay, I tell you. What else can I tell you that's been going on? I also thought to be more active on Instagram. I say that as I like haven't posted or been on it in a hot minute, but I feel like I want to just post more about what I'm reading so that there's still that connection, even if I'm not posting videos all the time. So yeah, I'm gonna try and just be better with my Instagram and not just completely disappear and come back like four times a year. <laughs> I will say though, I do go on my Instagram because the algorithm or like the things that I'm exposed to on my explore page are just so lovely. It's literally cats, food, books, and really beautiful interiors or architecture. So I actually do enjoy browsing my explore page on my bookish Instagram. And I also love to lurk the people that follow me. So if you happen to have a public account, I'm sorry, but I, I know who your parents are. I know <laughs> where you go to school, where you work. Um, yes, I'm just like, why are all these cool people following me? that I have nothing nothing to offer you. Like I, I, I never post, nor do I do stories. So this is like a one-sided relationship because I get so much in return. Like I just love to stalk all of you. <laughs> it's just like one of my favorite pastimes is just seeing the people that follow me and get a tiny little glimpse into your lives. So thank you for that. Anyway. Yeah, that's that's all I've got going on. Just back in the school swing of things. I feel like I have a better grasp on things because uh, I'm not there like, what is this? Like for the most part, I kind of understand what's going on. I'm comfortable in my classes. It's uh, year long courses. So everything that I started in September 
we're just continuing on. So that's kind of comforting in, in some ways. And yeah, everything's going great. I, oh, I guess I'll tell you now, although it's like months, months in the future, but it's truly just so lovely to daydream about. And that is that I have booked a cheeky little trip to New York City uh, early May for a little like congrats on finishing first year of law school. <laughs> Like that's how I'm justifying this uh, trip. But yeah, I am just so excited. Um, I have reached out to some peeps that I have met on the internet, but I'd love to meet more of you. Um, Sophie, I'm looking at you. <laughs> but Anna, I am definitely looking at you. <laughs> but yeah, my best friend from college, Zoe, she's actually going to law school in New York. So that was like the primary purpose of the trip was to see her because I adore her and I we haven't seen each other in a bit. And then my favorite cousin, don't tell my other cousins, <laughs> he just moved to New York. So I cannot wait to see him and his lovely partner. And I hope to see the lovely Rebecca and the lovely Alex. So yeah, it's just so fun. I'm so excited. I haven't gone to New York in many a years, so I can't wait to go to all the museums, the lovely bookstores, uh, eat all the food in the world, and just be in the company of people that I love dearly. So yeah, that's coming up again, like not anytime soon really, but now that we're talking about just updates, that's a big one, I guess. So yeah. Uh, we will reconvene once I finish Enticing Joy, which actually might be tonight because I've really been enjoying just kind of tucking myself in early and reading for several hours before I go to sleep at like 10. So, yeah. We just want to stay home and read. Isn't that right, Boo Boo? <laughs> I don't want to go to school. I just started at checkout 19. And it's wacky and I'm already really enjoying myself. So makes it hard to leave in the morning, especially with this cuteness. <laughs> it's nighttime. I was not planning on filming today. I just had a super busy school day and I forgot that I had a memo due in a couple days that I just like hadn't even opened the document. So I just spent most of my day doing that. But as I was eating my dinner, I just kept on revisiting Enticing Joy, which I finished yesterday, and I wanted to collect my thoughts a little bit, but in classic Iggy fashion, we're just going to see what comes out <laughs> and go with it. Um, but yeah, I've just been thinking about it nonstop since I finished, and obviously while I was reading it, I tried to slow myself down a little bit because I made this mistake with The Book of Delights, where... I just kind of like sped read it because it was so good. But it's one of those books that is, well, I mean, it was still enjoyed, but I thought I would get more from it if I just read a little essay every morning. So that's what I've done for the past week. And oh, it just made a world of a difference. This whole like experience has truly been the right book at the right time. I really needed a dose of just love and joy. <laughs> during this moment in my life and having Ross Gay as that like accompanying voice and presence was exactly what I needed. I felt like had me like truly was just like holding me and had my hand throughout, throughout like most of this month and it was just a beautiful thing. So I'm just really thankful that I chose to read this book when I did and I just kind of randomly found it at the library. So yeah, the other random thing I wanted to say is I'm sure nobody noticed this, but if you're wondering what happened to my prayer plant that this is where she lived for three years, <laughs> I, long story short, started to see some potential signs of root rot. And this is the first plant that I treated root rot with. And I think I just cut too many of like seemingly healthy roots and things started to go downhill very quickly. So I have decided to propagate her and I am just crossing my fingers that I also didn't fuck up the propagation <laughs> because if I did, I'm going to be devastated. 
Um, yeah, so I've got like three different little stems that are in indirect sunlight and I have to wait a few weeks until roots start to grow because they're just being propagated in water and then I'll plant them back here. So hopefully in a few weeks, you'll be seeing a slightly new and improved, but also way smaller <laughs> uh, prayer plant. So that's where, that's where she is. She's just taking a little, a little pause to, um, regrow and we're waiting for that metamorphosis to occur. So me and the plant are one and the same right now. We are going through new life stages and hopefully we're going to thrive. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Now back to enticing joy by the lovely Ross Gay. I'm going to echo a lot of what I already said in my yearly favorites because all of that rings true and could be applied to this book. Uh, obviously explores joy more broadly and being delighted and kind of the importance and centrality that is finding moments, pockets, events in our life that entice and bring forth this revolutionary feeling, which is joy. And it sort of reminded me a little bit of um, the thesis of Billy Ray Belcourt's memoir, A History of My Brief Body, and using joy as a form of resilience. And I think that's a really beautiful, super deep reframing and kind of taking away the like frivolous nature of joy. He kind of, Roske sort of opens the essay collection by talking back at the critics that are like, but why is a black man wasting his time talking about joy when we could be talking about colonialism or US imperialism or all other things that occupy our brain and our worries and uh, make us look at the world really critically. And he counters that by saying just how, like I've already mentioned, how revolutionary and important it is to talk and pollinate the world with a little bit of goodness and a little bit of joy, a lot of joy actually. So yeah, he's just such a inspiring figure. I am not one to uh, idolize or uh, really care much about celebrities to be honest, but I have the opposite experience when it comes to authors. Like I truly just admire and I'm in awe and fangirl over authors like you would not believe. Uh, Roski being at the top of that list, I must say. His voice is just so earnest and so lovely. His form of writing is very conversational. So I can see why some people would not love it because he does go on tangents and like there's a lot of footnotes that take up like a whole page in this book. I did not seem to mind that at all. He just feels so close to you because he's speaking and writing in the way that he would have a conversation with you. So he's letting you into his life, his perspective in a really digestible kind of way. The form of this uh, essay collection is also different from the Book of Delights because he goes in a lot more depth and shares a lot more uh, aspects of his personal life that we don't really get to see with the quite condensed little vignettes of the Book of Delight. So I really appreciated hearing his voice and kind of elaborate on a point farther uh, and letting us into the intimate aspects of his life. There's a lot of discourse around grief, around his young adulthood years, of, of finding belonging, of experiencing moments of solitude and loneliness and exclusion. There's also beautiful nature talk. I think I mentioned that already with the Book of Delights, but I just love the way this man talks about nature, especially this um, construction of a uh, public orchard that he is a founding member of. And I just love it. And it, this book is also really referential. It's as if he's in conversation with you as well as authors that have in, largely informed his worldview and have inspired him. So while he's inspiring me, he's also asking you to kind of see what these other voices are saying and see them as a source of inspiration. Uh, one person that is cited repeatedly is Robin Wall Kimmerer, the author of Breeding Sweetgrass. And just what he pulls from that book makes me want to read it again, because that book was truly life-changing along with 
uh, Ross Gay's work. Love that he's in conversation with other authors. Um, Maggie Nelson is another one. Um, Toni Morrison, of course. And yeah, I have nothing but great things to say. Again, it was such a privilege to hear uh, about his life more in depth, to hear that just lovely Ross Gay humor and joie de vivre. Sophie, I hope I'm saying that right. But just, yeah, just joy and zest for life that I just really admire and was craving and wanting in this moment in my life because it's just so beautiful to be in the presence of somebody so joyful and so beautiful and willing to share times and especially as a black cis man sharing moments of his life when he wasn't open to vulnerability and to accepting joy and yeah it was just really really vulnerable and beautiful and introspective and I'm just really thankful for his work and the impact it has had on me. So anyways, enough of the gushing. <laughs> I hope you pick it up and I hope you love it as much as I did. I won't be upset if you don't because like I said, I can see why some folks would not absolutely love the um, writing style, but I personally am a stan. And then um, before I bid you good night or goodbye whenever you're watching this, I started Checkout 19 this morning. I'm only like 10 pages in, but intrigued. Very, very intrigued. She's got a very peculiar and standalone voice. I can already tell that from the 10 pages that I've read and I really appreciate that in an author. So I am intrigued, I am excited, and I am going to make my lavender chamomile tea and go to bed and read some of this for a little bit. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you're starting your year off reading and what your reading plans are for this coming year. Like I said, I'm not keeping, or sorry, I am keeping track, but I did not set a goal. I'm just vibing. So yeah, uh, I hope that we see each other very soon. I think I might do the 23 books or authors for 2023. I've been seeing a lot of my friends post uh, those videos and it's just such a joy to watch. So maybe I'll hop on that bandwagon and maybe you'll see that for me. But yeah, until next time. Bye. <laughs>